Hi, I'm George Cody, barber and owner of Trait Barbershop and Uppercut Deluxe Ambassador. Today I'm going to be doing a mid skin fade with a kind of swept over textured style. Before I even wet the hairs, I kind of assess, you know, the head shape, um, any divots in the head, if there's any moles or anything I should be aware of. And once I'm aware of that, I'll uh, wet the hair evenly and then I can just section it off uh, and yeah, cut it. So yeah, I'm just kind of sectioning out the way that the crown lays naturally. I'm just kind of making sure that I uh, comb it in the right direction so that there'll be no hairs sticking up and just try and keep everything really kind of clean. So this was a crop before and because we're going to change the style I want to make sure that it's cut correctly. So that's the front, I'm going to leave the majority of the length there and I'm just going to trim the back a bit. So I'll comb it all in the direction that I'm going to section and just create a uh, profile section down the center of the head. And because I want to be more in control of the front length first, I'm going to start at the front and just retain a lot of the length of the front and then just work my way back down the, uh, down the profile section, reducing a bit more length towards the, uh, the back of the head. Go for the top first? Yeah, I, I usually start at the top first. If the hair's really short on top to begin with, I'll go straight in with the sides. But yeah, generally I'll start at the top just to remove any weight. And I like to get the shape in first. I find that it makes I can clip her into the haircut then. Um, it helps me, it shows me where to go with the clippers easier. So now I'm just working from the back of the head towards the front, just following the profile section. Just club cutting at the moment because I want to get the, uh, I want a strong shape. And then afterwards I'll go in and personalize it. I'll texture it and remove some weight. I always comb the hair in the direction so I'm going to section it just so I can take my sections a lot easier. Just check the guide. There we go. Not much to take off at the front at all there, really. So usually with the uh, styles that are longer on top that are swept over. I like to keep the side that's coming over quite square. I mean, this was a crop before, because we like to have enough, I want enough length to come over. And then the side where the hair is getting swept over too, you can find that it can get a bit weighty. So I just like to reduce a bit of the weight here because this can get really heavy and I don't want it mushrooming out too much. Take a bit off here. Oh, I am left-handed, yeah. Do you struggle finding scissors? Well, when I first started cutting hair, it was, uh, there was probably only one company that I could name that did left-handed scissors. Most scissor, well, most companies now, they always, they almost have to have uh, a lefty range, but it's not very vast at all. So yeah, we, you know, us lefties, we are quite limited. These are, these are Keisho scissors. Uh, and I found that Keisho are great scissors, but they also, um, they cater, they had a lot more to offer uh, in their left-handed range. I'm just gonna over-direct the fringe. Just take the ends off. Into the contour of the head. And I'm just gonna comb the hair in the direction that I want it to sit, and then I'm gonna cut it, if anything. It, you know, in the direction I want it to be styled. Yeah, yeah, I try and break it down as, as simply as I can. Because it's, you hear it, every, every barber has heard it, and I think most customers have said it. I can never style it the way that the barber does. <laughs> um, when really, you know, we don't do anything, you know, out of the ordinary. Firstly, having your hair cut correctly will make the hair easier to style. 
uh, and then using the correct uh, product. The correct styling routine as well, like I, I use a blow dryer pretty much all the time, which is like part one of the styling process. And then of course, you know, using the correct product. But I will put a bit of um, product in to kind of pre-style it, just so it sets it into place, you know, roughly. I usually use um, Easy Hold. Um, it's quite a nice light product uh, and it's good for blow drying in. When did you open the shop? I opened the shop in the September, so about just over two months ago. Um, yeah, it's been a bit of a bit of a whirlwind, you know, you know what it, you know how it is. But I can kind of breathe easy now. It's kind of it's looked better than I ever could have imagined, which is good. I'm just going to put some uh, uppercut easy hold in to uh, damp hair, just to pre-style it, gives it a little bit of grit. Get it into the roots, just prep the hair really for uh, the blow drying. I usually start at the back mainly and work my way around the head and then I'll blow dry um, back to front. I feel like you need to have, in my opinion, I like to have the back the sides dry and the back dry before I start blow drying the front. Because if you start with the front, but everything else behind the front is damp, it weighs the hair down a bit, I think, and it pushes on the front. So I just find it a bit easier to start towards the back. Right, and then what I'll do is I'll just texture the hair a little bit, which will remove a bit of, uh, bit of excess weight, but it'll just give me a bit of, uh, It'll give Zach a bit more movement when he styles his hair. Just create a bit more of a natural, natural look. Again, just working from the back to the front. You see it's very, very thick. So I'm just going to break it up a bit. When did you kind of like get interested in the So I worked in retail. Um, for a, well, it must have been a good three to four years. And uh, as you know, hair and fashion go hand in hand, really. They're, they're one in the same. So I was always interested in male image, you know, hairstyles and the latest trends. And I, I liked, you know, I, I used to have a weekly haircut myself whenever I could, really. I'd try and get a haircut in. So I liked, you know, I liked the whole ritual of having a haircut. I liked the, the process of, have, you know, going to the barbers relaxing, chatting. And it just fascinated me watching, watching the barber cut, cut my hair. You know, I loved it. Um, and I knew straight away that I had a bit of an interest in it. And yeah, it went from there really. I, I just enrolled on, on a college course, which is all right. You know, you learn the basics, um, but most of it was learned on the job. You know, I landed uh, a job early on um, in, a, in a local shop and you know shout out to them you know taught me a lot really and that was how I started my journey really and then I just yeah went from there Give you a little dust off. So we're gonna move on to the clippers now. What I'll do is I usually start with a with about a two, two and a half, and I tend to just clipper into where I've created the uh, graduation with my scissor uh, scissor work. So this is a two and a half now. So sometimes if someone comes into the, sits in the chair and they've got a big head of hair and you go straight in with your clippers, sometimes you just, I, I, I never used to like creating a massive shelf around someone's head and then having to work, you know, to get that, that shelf removed, or whether it was clipper over comb, scissor over comb. I just feel like now I can effortlessly just clipper into the work I've done on top.
So I tend to do one side, then the other, and then I, I marry it up in, towards the back. The back, it, for me, is always the hardest part of, of any haircut, really. I just, that's where you get the most uh, lumps and bumps and thick growth patterns. And so I kind of like to treat the, uh, the back separately. Just make sure that everything below this is, is completely clean and I've caught all the hairs in every direction as best I can. So there's a nice clean canvas to work on really. I said, I'd, you know, we we're gonna do about a mid fade. Zach's got, he's got thick hair, but you can see in areas it's, it's quite fine. And I haven't got the greatest amount of space from the top of his ear to the, the round of the head to fade. So I can't stretch the foot. Well, I'm gonna try and stretch the fade. I don't wanna put the zero line too high. Um, because then I'm only going to give myself a really short space to fade and it create more of a compact fade, whereas I feel like he'd look better with a... Well, it would, it would, I think it, it would suit him better to have a bit more of a stretched out fade. So I'm using the Wild Seniors here, um, but I flip between these and the Magic Clips while I've, I've used Wild for as, since I started, and I don't think I've used anyone else really. Um, it's just what I'm used to. And they've come a real long way in terms of what they have to offer now, tools wise. I remember it was difficult back in the day, um, back in the day, to get hold of, uh, you know, the best equipment really. I think, you know, good workman never blames his tools, but there's no, everyone knows that tools do have a, <laughs> yeah, they are, they do have a, an importance. So the better the tool as well, it make my life easier. And uh, there wasn't many clippers available really. I think there was what, the Wild Super Taper, uh, the Wild Icon, but yeah, the Seniors and the Magic Clips, they were difficult to get hold of in the UK. So now it's great because you've got so much choice. And cordless as well. I mean, the cordless clippers back in the day, you just didn't bother. <laughs> I keep saying back in the day, like I'm really old or I'm a veteran at this, but I'm not. Just underneath that zero with the Wild Senior. Just to take the hairs a little bit shorter because I'm going to go in with uh, the foil shaver. So I want to get it as close as I possibly can. So yeah, I'm just going to come, come up just below the, uh, the trimmer line now. So I've got a zero with my uh, Wild Senior. Just below that, I've got the trimmer. And then below that, the foil shaver, just to get it a bit tighter. And I like to just feel the area, just to make sure that I've caught the hairs in every direction. Back to my Wild Senior. Open blade. And I'm just going to go up about an inch, well, half an inch above my zero line. Like I say, I tend to work on one side at a time. So I tend to work from obviously the temple area to, you know, just I'd say the mastoid bone just behind the ear. And then I'll connect at the back. So I'm just going to close the blade halfway and kind of use a, like a picking technique with the corner of the blade, just to make sure, you know, I'm getting all the hairs. This is quite thick, coarse hair, and you can't really see on the camera, but you've got different, you've got blonde hairs in here, you've got dark hairs in here, They're all growing in every direction. So get my one guard on, open, and then we're just gonna flick out now, just below the two. It's kind of coming off the head, really. And then I'll close it to a one and just little flicks. Sometimes I'll even open the, the one guard to a, you know, 1.25, you know, just to get in between. And again, <laughs> depends on the, uh, the hair, what I'm working with, really. And the trusty, half guard 
that none of us can live without really but you can use it without the half guard this this part you could go back in with a an open blade but yeah it's a bit safer going in with uh, the half guard i find be the final touch now just to meet the number two Love that sign. Anything handmade is just, yeah, fascinates me, to be honest. I like craft, you know? Like anything that's, that's handmade, get this side done. And it's the exact same process. Just making sure I'm clearing the area as well that I've just been over with the clipper, with this, this little brush here. Uh, fades. I, I am getting more and more scissor cuts in, uh, which seems to be quite common towards the winter. I think people like to grow their hair a little bit in the winter, and they're, they're my favourite cuts to do. Sometimes if the, if the back area is really thick, I'll work straight down. Um, but yeah, I've, I've gone in with obviously the zero, the 0.5, faded that line out as best I can. And now I'm just going back up again, one and a half, working below that with a one. And then the uh, one and a half guard, just to, if anything, clear up that area between the one and a half and the two. Bit of clipper over comb, bit of classic barbering. Again, like I don't use clipper over comb for like I try to use it more for refining really. It's never anything OTT. It's just as you can see, I'm just notching really. I love scissor over comb, but I've never been amazing at it. So I just use what works best for me really. Just dusting any loose ends. Like I said, that's usually what I use scissor over comb for, really. And then uh, sometimes I'll point cut into the fade just to remove any little dark spots. Well, I always go over the neck with the razor. It feels nice as well. Some people say it's the fav their favourite part. <laughs> so I'm just going to finish off with some uh, styling powder. Um, I mean, this is for a dry, natural look. It has to be a powder, really. So I kind of just evenly disperse it where I want it get it into the roots, like that. Being careful not to get it all over your face. Yeah. And this will just lift out any of that texture that I put in earlier. Right.